Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to finally be talking about houseplants and how to take care of them and just all the tips that I've learned over the years of kind of figuring out how to take care of different houseplants, um, how to look at the lighting and the soil and that sort of thing and I've learned all of this through different resources as well as just um, trial and error with my own plants. I am going to give you some tips to kind of set you on the right path and also just tell you what kind of plants I think in my opinion are the easiest to start as a beginner and also just my my hardest plant that I've been taking care of and that sort of thing. Starting with my houseplant journey, <laughs> I want to say literally started um, I mean 10, 10 plus years ago I want to say and you can judge me all you want, but I got my first cactus because of Bella in the Twilight series. She had her little cactus in the almost the first scene, uh, maybe the second scene I want to say of Twilight, and I wanted a cactus all of a sudden, just as I'm sure many teenagers during that time wanted a cactus after seeing Twilight. But you can judge me all you want, it's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I've grown into accepting that little teenage Betty who loved that that series and still loves it today But anyways, I'm getting off topic. So I started with my first cactus and it lasted a fair few months um, and one day it actually kind of just died and It sounds a little bit dramatic, but I thought that things were going well and I was watering it and that sort of stuff and then figured out that I was watering it too much. So I didn't know that you could water a plant too much, but you know, obviously it makes sense that a cactus doesn't need that much water because they're just made for the desert. So, and got a couple succulents and they also perished. <laughs> so if you're getting anything from this beginning story is that yes, when you start taking care of any kind of house plant or plants in general, um, you will kill a few. It is okay, it happens to literally everyone who starts taking care of them and no one is perfect and no one's gonna get it right immediately, especially if you go into it without knowing anything. So I'm hoping that this video is going to be, you know, setting you on the right track and just giving you the stuff that I've learned. So um, after my whole succulent craze was over, I got my first uh, pothos, which is also known as devil's ivy or golden pothos, and it's kind of like an elephant ear ivy type of thing. And I actually still have it, and it's hanging up on my left over here. And I got that, I want to say, about six years ago, so I've been able to take care of that plant for six years. And of course, from you know 10 plus years ago till this one, um, there were a few mishaps here and there, but this is my longest standing plant so far, and I've taken many cuttings from it, so I know quite a bit about my pothos. And from there, I got a spider plant, which is actually, I'm not sure if you can actually see it. Um, it's it's above the um, monstera back here. And taking, taking care of that one, and I just kind of got the bug, and I just started buying more and more plants, and my whole like room is filled with plants at this point and I've kept a very good majority of them alive. So with my little journey that I've told you now, um, let's start getting into some of the tips and things that I've learned just strictly through trial and error along with some other resources as well, but mostly just figuring out what works for my plants. And that's the first thing that I want to say is that um, all these tips that I have are kind of baseline, but your environment is different than mine, like my room temperature, humidity, that sort of thing is going to be different from yours. So there's different things that you might want to test out with your own environment, with your own house, that sort of thing. But this is kind of like baseline of hopefully what can keep your plants alive and thriving. So first let's talk about soil. Um, I don't make my own soil, I just don't have the space to keep it in Tupperware or um, bins or that sort of thing. So. I do just use um, houseplant potting soil from Home Depot. Uh, I also have found this really nice brand from Target. It's literally called uh, the Good Dirt. <laughs> and it's just, it comes in a small little bag, uh, perfect for a couple of plants here and there. It has a bit of like bark in it along with, you know, just soil and perlite, which um, I'm not gonna get into like super, super detail into this video about different parts of soils and that sort of thing, just because I could go on forever about that. But the one thing that you wanna make sure you get with your soil is that it's well draining and that it has perlite. So perlite are these little tiny 
um, I forget exactly what they're made out of. I want to say volcanic ash, that, that that's what they're made out of. They're little tiny balls and they kind of just um, have little, they make little spacers in the soil so that water can drain through really quickly and easily. So make sure that your soil does at least have that in it and it'll say on the packaging if it's well draining or usually the indoor potting soil is just formulated for you know um, indoor plants that need well draining soil and i'm also not going to get quite into cactuses and succulents in this video just because i haven't had a whole lot of luck with those i more like go on the high humidity like tropical type of plants so Anyways, I am getting off track already in this video. So that is my like top recommendation on soil. I will also link it. Um, I get it at Target. I'm not sure if it's available anywhere else. It might be available on Amazon. If I find it, I will link it. But so far, I've only found it at Target. Otherwise, you can literally just get like miracle Grow uh, potting soil and that'll work just fine. So when you're putting soil into a pot, you want to make sure that you don't compress it down. Um, when you're putting it in, just let it fall naturally. You can even tap the pot a little bit to kind of settle it, but don't compress it because that'll make it really hard for the roots to be able to grow and move through. And it also makes it really hard for water to go through as well because it kind of just sits in the soil and I'm gonna go into watering next so you wanna you know you'll figure it out why you don't want water to just sit in your pot and so I have some like previous um, transplanting videos if you want to see just kind of how I transplant my plants and it's very simple I mean obviously if you're starting out it seems like a daunting task but once you get the hang out of a hang of it it's really easy to do and um, you want to make sure that there's just about an inch of space just above um, from the top of the soil to the top of the pot and that just allows for water to kind of sit for a minute before it drains into the soil because if you put the soil all the way to the top of the pot you're going to spill water everywhere and it's so with watering i just use um, our tap water you can use distilled water uh, either way you're going to have like kind of nutrient deficiencies and that's another thing that I don't think I can possibly get into in this video. Nutrients are completely like a whole nother ball game when it comes to house plants and there's just not enough time in this video and otherwise this video will be really long. So biggest thing about watering is that you do not want to overwater or underwater. So it is hard to find that balance when you're first starting out. So basically this kind of goes into also what kind of pot you have. So if your pot does have drainage holes in the bottom, then you're far better off than ones that don't. Um, I have several pots that don't have drainage holes at this point, but I've gotten to the point where I know my plants pretty well and I know how much water they need and how much to water them at any given time. So um, if you want to just start out, make sure that your pot has drainage holes for the water to go through. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to find out exactly how much water your plant needs. So if your pot does have drainage holes, which if you've just gotten it from the nursery or Home Depot, more than likely it will, um, you can literally just soak it completely and let all of the water completely drain out. Uh, that's what I do with several of my plants that do have drainage holes is I'll just water in kind of a circular motion around to make sure I get all of the soil wet and as soon as it starts draining through the bottom I stop and I just let it drain completely and uh, before I put it back on a shelf or anything like that. If you have one that does not have drainage holes you will have to be a lot more careful about how much you water. So what I go based off of is um, if the first inch of the soil, of the topsoil, is dry and under that you can just kind of feel it and it's like slightly damp, then I will water my plant. Um, it Basically it's your, your first knuckle here is what I use. That's kind of my gauge for if my plant needs water or not. And basically for the ones that don't have drainage holes, I will just do a couple swirls of water, make sure that goes down and then I leave it. And I just check a little bit more frequently with those pots because um, it's very easy to overwater them. And overwatering looks like if the soil is, you know, just soaked and it's not draining. And you can also tell that it will start to get some mildew on it. And it just is a whole new thing that goes into root rot because the soil, uh, the soil is so wet, the roots aren't able to dry out and that just corrodes them basically. And it's a very distinct smell if you have bad, like wet soil. And 
underwatering of course is a whole another thing and underwatering looks like the um, edge of the pot like the soil on the edge of the pot is starting to separate as far as watering goes um, that is kind of like the basics for that so we're gonna move into lighting now so you can see behind me I have my monstera and a couple other plants over here and they're right by the window and that is what is called um, like bright direct sunlight now I do have window films so the window films protect them a lot more um, and it makes it kind of bright indirect light so plants like indoor plants especially tend to light bright indirect light and that means you know it's kind of filtered through direct light means that the sun is actually touching the leaf itself and sometimes when it's close to a window and the sun touches the leaf it can burn them so i have these window films on one, because it's summer and it protects from the heat, but also just from um, just so I can diffuse the light a little bit. I do have my top ones open and the sun comes straight in so that it can touch the other plants in my room that are further away from the window. The further you get away from the window, obviously, the less light there is. So they have like low light or no light plants and that's not really a thing. Like plants will survive with really low light, but they won't necessarily thrive. So that's why I have really like my windows as open as possible um, with still staying comfortable myself. Um, that way they can all get a good amount of light touching them. They also have row lights and you can put these basically anywhere and I really actually like these a lot. They have different spectrums that the sun um, UV rays would have and you can put them in like literally like a closet or something with plants and it'll help them um, survive because it's not necessarily just the sunshine that the plants need but different um, UV rays inside the sun so it's a whole different thing if you really want to get into it but um, I'll put some grow lights that I like in the description as well and those I'm thinking about getting for a couple of my plants if I especially want to hang some like on the ceiling away from the window that would be a really good option for that. So now that we've gone through all of the basic needs of your plant I'm going to get into pests because if you have house plants you are more than likely to get pests at some point and I will be putting pictures up on the screen next to me here of the different insects and pests that can be on your house plants so if you are squeamish to different insects I am sorry this is your warning now <laughs> but obviously if you do have house plants it's very important to know what kind of pests can um, invade basically into your into your home with them so the first one that I'm going to go over is the most annoying and the most common and that is fungus gnats so fungus gnats are super annoying they're not harmful to the plant or you but they basically are just an extreme nuisance and fungus gnats are a good indicator that you either have standing water in the saucers of your drainage pots or you are over watering and you have a lot of soggy soil they uh, will come in and lay eggs in the soil and hatch from there so that's also a good indicator for you just in case that one of your plants might be having some root rot issues or just standing water in general so make sure after you water your plants and if anything gets into the saucers that you empty it right away you don't want any standing water whatsoever so the biggest thing with fungus gnats is once you get them um, the more of a consistent watering schedule you get and the less soggy water you have in your soil basically they'll kind of die out uh, they can't thrive in moderate to dry soil so that is one way to get rid of them and the other way to get rid of the adults is to get little fly like gnat traps and put them along your plants that sort of thing I haven't found a remedy for getting rid of the eggs. I will put something in the description if I do find it, I'll research it. Um, basically what I've done is kind of sprinkle cinnamon on top of the soil and that seems to kind of keep the problem down. And I also have a pretty good watering schedule down now so I don't deal with gnats a whole lot. So for the next pest that I'm going to mention, basically you need an insecticidal soap for them. And there's a really easy recipe that I found and I'll also put it in the description. It's just, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I think it's Castile soap and water basically is what you need. And you just put it in a spray bottle and you can spray the leaves and that sort of thing. 
And when you use this, make sure you also um, spray the underside. A lot of these insects like to put eggs under, under the leaves and um, hide under there basically. So um, the pests would be spider mites, which is the next common thing that you would get on your plants. And these are pretty easy to spot. Uh, basically, they'll be like tiny little webs all over your plants. and they get attracted to kind of dying plants so if you have some decaying leaves um, or a dead plant that you just haven't um, gotten to throwing away they're more than likely to get on those sorts of plants with most of anything um, i want to kind of backtrack with most of these pests they come in from new house plants so a good like rule of thumb when you do get a new house plant into your house is to kind of put it into a little quarantine area or even check it before you bring it home. Check under the leaves, check in the soil, see if there's anything that looks a little bit off. But if you, you know, really like a plant and you just take it home, um, make sure you put it in a different room if possible. Um, if it's not possible, just kind of keep it on the other side of your room away from the majority of your other house plants and just inspect it. Uh, basically, just inspect every leaf Make sure that the soil isn't soggy and then you know you're good to go. But things do happen and a lot of these pests, you know, do thrive um, on different plants and they are like contagious if you want to say. So it's good to just have insecticidal soap on you anyways and you just kind of douse the plant in it, kind of rub it on the leaves and then wash off the excess. A lot of these pests as well, you can just wash off the leaves and you know just basically wash them down the drain and you can get rid of them in that sort of way. And the other thing that kind of looks like spider mites are also mealybugs. These look like little round kind of insects and they kind of go around and make little webs and it kind of looks a little bit like mold. So this is another indicator that you might have really soggy soil or root rot. And the best way to get this is to take your plant out, wash all the soil off of the roots completely, and transplant it into a new pot or really, really well washed um, pot that you had it in before. And you want to make sure that there is no soil left in that pot from the previous planting because they literally survive anything. <laughs> so you just want to make sure that you get as much as that soil out of that pot and off the plant as possible and then re repot it into new soil. Other pests are thripes, I believe it's called, and also white flies. These insects will cause damage to your plants as well as also spider mites. They basically suck the sap out of the leaves of your plants and they leave dark spots and decaying and it could literally just like suck the life out of your plant. So a good overall thing to get rid of all of these is the insecticidal soap. So that is kind of an overall thing that you need to have uh, when you have house plants and just basically if you check on your plants daily it'll be you know easy to catch these things when they first happen. So these are the biggest things about houseplants I would say that I wish I knew when I first started out. And so a few other little tips that I've found for different houseplants is um, one, make sure you inspect regularly. And this just means, you know, looking over the plant. This goes back to the pests to make sure you catch them when they're in their first stages. Um, you can also see if there's any dead leaves on there and make sure you trim them right away. Even if they're starting to turn yellow, trim it because once it starts turning yellow, it's not gonna turn green again. It's just going to keep dying and then you might attract pests into it. And um, so I thought before that if I just then took care of my plant better that the leaf would turn green again but it doesn't work that way and so you want to just make sure that you get yellowing uh, like dark leaves off right away obviously you're gonna miss a few here and there that's okay and also this way you can turn your plants um, so let me get you an example of a plant that I haven't turned in a little while this is a very good example of a plant that I haven't turned in a little while and you can see that it's all bending this way and basically by turning them um, it'll start to bend this way towards the light because all your plants are going to bend towards whatever light source you have so this one is on a shelf that's a little further away from the window so it bends a lot more drastically than the ones that are near the window but even the ones that are near the window need to be turned like I want to say every two weeks is a good um, place to be when you want to turn your plants because they move pretty quickly. So 
You can see that this one is doing really well, but it definitely like very severely needs to be turned. And the shelves are very close to the wall, so they might, you know, bend a little bit weirdly for a bit, but you can see that this one is doing pretty well. It has a bunch of little babies in the middle and it actually will probably need to be transplanted pretty soon because the roots are probably going crazy in there. So that is why you need to turn your plants because they will, some of them, they will literally become top heavy and they might even fall over um, if they're bigger and they can't support themselves anymore. So that's a good thing to make sure that you do. And then also if you do have plants that like humidity like I do, I will link a couple humidifiers that I use in the description. Uh, I have a bigger one that is nice for me as well and a smaller one that is really nice and it's cute. It's in the shape of a little cactus and it has a light on it. So it doesn't really matter um, how many you have or how expensive they are. Some people will even put a just a saucer with some water in it and it'll just, when it evaporates, it'll put humidity into the air. So you can even do that as well. That's the most cost efficient way to go about put, putting humidify. That's the most cost efficient way of putting humidity into the air. And if you do have a swamp cooler, then that will also be good for putting humidity into the air. Just be careful that you don't put your plant right under an air vent or the AC or anything because they tend to like moderate temperatures, so not extremes of heat or not extremes of cold either. So that is a good um, little middle ground to give you to not put it underneath a vent anywhere. So last thing I want to go over in this video is a couple resources that I really like. So these are two books that I have found that have a lot of good information in them. This one is The um, Growing House Plants, The Kew Gardener's Guide to. So it's by Royal Botanical Gardens and basically looks like this. I got this one at Barnes & Noble a few years ago and I'm sure they still have it. If they do, I'll link it down. And this one has um, a good amount of plants in here and it gives you things like the name, like the common name, the uh, botanical name, where to grow, how to grow, growing tips. And it also has pictures in it as well. So these are some plants in here that I haven't really gotten into growing, like a cane palm or something like that, just because I have one room and I'm already growing a little tree in the corner from a, a fiddle leaf fig. So that one will eventually grow, eventually, if I can keep it alive. But this one is just really, really good for a whole like, whole bunch of variety of different plants that they have in here. And it's a good resource. I really like it a lot. It gives you some really good, um, like even temperature that it likes, like how much light it likes, how much water it, it needs, and just a whole bunch of resources in here. It's just a really, really nice resource, and it looks very pretty as well. And then the second one is a book that my mother actually got me um, about, I think it was actually for Christmas this year, and it says Green Vibes Only, and it's a guided journal for growing, nurturing, and enjoying houseplants. This one is so cute, and I really like it a lot. It's basically a whole log of your plant. So you can put in um, your different plants, plant names, put a picture, ignore my strange drawings, but basically like just a log of when you got your plant, how much you water it, where is it hanging in your room, or is it on the shelf, that sort of thing. And it also like it gives you a whole bunch of pages for those just in case you have a whole jungle in your house. <laughs> and also monthly observations, it's really nice to put on down. So if you tried a different watering schedule, then you can go back in a month and see how your plant is progressing. And just different things, like if you tried a different fertilizer, all sorts of different things in there. And it also does have a watering tracker. Um, that way, in case you're into like filling out little bubbles every time you water your plants, just to remember when you did water them, and how long ago it was, you can also have that in here. And the biggest resource is the very beginning of the book has a whole section of like what kind of plants there are as far as house plants, um, how to kind of identify them, what they look like, and the biggest thing that I really like here, there are two pages in here that have trouble in paradise and common pests. So if you get this book, basically um, it will tell you different things like how I've told you and a little bit more as well, kind of what 
yellow leaves mean brown leaf tips, faded leaves, all, all sorts of things like that. And all the common pests in here and what they do to your plant. And also going into like the different type of pots there are. This, this book is like really a really good rounded um, beginner book for different plants. And I really, really like this one. So, so to end this video, I'm just going to tell you what my recommendation would be for a beginner house plant and also what my hardest house plant to take care of is. And so for a beginner house plant caretaker, I would recommend the Pothos, the Devil's Ivy. It is a super, super easy plant to take care of and it grows like a weed, <laughs> like it grows crazy and I've taken so many cuttings from mine and made new plants out of them and I it has been through a lot like it's been through overwatering it's been through underwatering it's been through not enough light all this all of the different things that you could possibly put a house plant through and it has survived and I think that these plants are like near impossible to kill unless you just don't water it and so my hardest house plants that I have ever taken care of and still cannot keep alive is a string of pearls so this plant is a kind of succulent and it but it likes water um, and also it doesn't like water like I <laughs> It, you can see how hard it is for me to figure out this plant so I've tried it about three times now and I've tried it from a little seedling all the way to a mature plant and I have killed it all so I have no idea if it's just me <laughs> but it seems like the string of pearls is one of the hardest plants that I've had to take care of the one behind me the monstera is the next one down from that this one is really thriving and doing very well I just got like a little like coconut um, pole for it and now it's thriving so um, that was my next one though I have killed one of those in the past and other than that um, all the other plants I have had are kind of middle ground but that is my recommendation for the easiest plant and also stay away from my hardest plant basically if you're just starting out that is going to be it for this video i really hope that it was informative and it helped you guys out and it gives you a bit more courage to start taking care of house plants it can be a bit daunting in the beginning just because there some plants are very temperamental but Hopefully with these different tips, you'll be on your way to starting your jungle. Please put any of your tips that you have and that you have found out while taking care of different plants in the comments. I would love to figure out anything else that you know I could possibly do to take care, better care of my own plants. And also if you have any questions of things that I didn't answer in this video, also let me know in the comments if you would like for me to do an updated plant tour. I have quite a few more <laughs> from the last plant tour that I did a few years ago so if you guys want to see that definitely let me know and I'd be happy to film one. I think that that will be it so thank you so much for watching this video and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more videos in the future and I will see you in the next one. Bye!